to our next stop, which is going to be the rest of the Outer Banks. We're going to a place called Oregon. Oregon? Oregon. Inlet. Oregon Inlet. It's a beautiful drive up from where we just came from, Swan Quarter, up the, I don't know what you call it, but it's all farmland and country and really cool old little houses like that. I saw a sign that says this is part of the North Carolina Scenic Byway. We have about an hour to go until we cross the bridge over to Roanoke Island and then another bridge over to, well, I forget what island's called, but the Outer Banks. And then we'll go south a bit to Oregon Inlet and then we'll check it out, see what's going on in Oregon Inlet. So in this short amount of time, we have already definitely decided that we like state parks, natural reserves, refuges, national parks, way better than private campgrounds, I would say, just because they're more scenic, a little bit more low key, kind of more natural. However, this time of year with how hot it is and how many no CMs are out, we have to find those state parks or national parks with hookups because we need to shut the windows to keep the bugs out and we need to have the air conditioning on. We sound so soft. So I know. soft. I know. We we tried guys, we really did try, but literally no sleep and just eating alive. On the boat we can deal with the eight not having AC because it there's always a breeze on the water. It's always a little cooler. You're away from anything blocking a breeze, so you always get a little bit of a breeze. And we know there's no CMs in Florida, so we have our no CM nets and everything like that. But we're just not set up like that yet. We weren't really expecting it in the truck camper. So our, our net is just too big. So no CMs come right our in Our screen it. on our windows. If we did two major things, we would be fine without these hookups. If we installed a big exhaust fan in our hatch above our bed, and like Sierra said, made our screens on all our windows just a finer mesh so no CMs can get in. If we did those two things, we'd be all right. So until then, until we get out of no CM territory and out of the heat, we are looking for state parks and national parks with hookup options. So we just did find one, the last one available at Oregon Inlet State Park. So that's where we're headed. are here at Oregon Inlet in the Outer Banks and our campsite wasn't quite ready yet. We decided that we we're gonna go on a boat ride. Public boat ramp like right across the street. So super easy. Oregon Inlet is known to be kind of a nasty inlet. It can get really rough, it constantly is changing, and I've always just seen warnings about it on our charts, and even actually on like YouTube. I've seen YouTube videos of like Coast Guard escorting disabled boats in through the inlet. But you can see what makes it so treacherous. Like right here, it's super shallow water, and just these little tiny waves are still breaking just outside the channel. But it's similar to a lot of the other sketchy inlets like Jupiter or Fire Island or any of those. Another thing about this area is that Cape Hatteras in general, going around Cape Hatteras can also be pretty treacherous. Obviously you can pick your days and it could be calm as can be, but there's a lot of shallow waters off offshore and shoals and it's just an area that's notorious for shipwrecks. Every time we pass through this area, we were either still new to cruising or the weather just hasn't been great so we've never 
sailed or motored on the outside of Hatteras. We've always done the intercoastal in one way or another. The Gulf Stream actually does get pretty close to this area here because the cape sticks so far out into the ocean. We have some rods, but we didn't bring any tackle or anything, so we're just cruising around. We're gonna head back in to see what we can find in shore here. You guys gotta see this thing. It's a crazy jellyfish I've never seen before. And it's got little fish swimming all around it. You gotta see it. Look at that thing. Don't touch it, Jets. That was the craziest jellyfish I've ever seen. The top of it is like hard. You can touch the top. You don't want to touch underneath because I don't know how poisonous or venomous the tentacles are. It had a bunch of fish living under it. And one looked like it was maybe a baby pompano. Jenny's having an absolute blast on the sandbar, just running around. Ready, set, go! Having hermit crab races, we drew a circle in the sand. First one out, first wins. This is my crab. That's the Aris crab. This is round two. I was the champion in round one. You can see my crab. Ready? Set. Oh, Teddy wants to play. I mean, no. Now we just gotta wait and see who wins. Okay, my guy is off and he's moving. Yeah, a little further. <laughs> I win, I win, I win! I don't have to make dinner! Woo! <laughs> I was just standing in the stupid because I was getting bit by a horse What? I won! cruising around this little area. I guess the town's called Juan Cheese Harbor. On the chart it says Mill Landing Creek. I don't know if that's just a small part of it or what. Cool little area, bunch of commercial fishing boats all around and looks like fish processing fact wholesalers or something like that. And then in the back of the harbor here, there's a bunch of sport fishing boats. All through there. What do you think that big red boat is? Yep, all big fancy sport fishing boats in here. And then over on this side, it looks like there's a bunch of tuna fishing boats. You can tell by the big, what they call, I think they call them green sticks sticking up. They're all like down these style with those big sticks 
sticking in the air. So I really like commercial fishing harbors and then just mixed with a bunch of other stuff and just check out all the boats around. It's just really neat. I can do it all day long. How about you guys? This kind of place reminds me of a spot like Montauk. Actually, one of these boats we saw on the back of it was from Montauk. Montauk Harbor is home to a bunch of commercial, a big commercial fishing fleet, and then just mixed with same sort of thing, a bunch of sailboats anchored in the back. It's really cool to check out all the activity that's going on, all the unique boats that, that are around. I think we're just gonna cruise back down to the boat ramp, pull out, and uh, go to our campsite. Hopefully the people before us left and uh, we'll be able to pull in. Here's getting some work done on the computer. I'm just walking around the campground, walking to the beach now. Really cool spot. It's just clean, pretty big open spaces or whatever you call them. And really pretty, like if you look over this way, it's just rolling dunes and then through the dunes and over and right over to the beach. Just went and grabbed ice across the street at the fishing station, really close. And right on that side of the island is the bay uh, or whatever you call it, Sound Bay, I'm not sure which body water exactly it is but something that leads into like the Pamlico Sound or something. Yeah it just seems like a lot of natural area around here just really pristine. Not many people around also there and there's some cool rigs in the campground too a lot of little Airstream trailers and stuff really neat. This guy thought he could get on the beach in his little uh, Toyota or Honda or whatever it is, but apparently not. 